whether you believe the earth to be flat, globular, hollow, concave, or otherwise, the freedom to independently travel and explore the earth, from the North Pole to whatever exists south of the South Pole, to any and everywhere else, should be a fundamental and unalienable right. Military vessels near the North Pole and Antarctica have repeatedly barred independent teams of explorers from traveling into these heavily patrolled and restricted waters. The Antarctic Treaty prevents all independent travel south of the 60th degree south latitude, where rebels like Jarl Andahoy and his team have been repeatedly turned around at gunpoint, jailed, and fined for daring to attempt. What is so important in Antarctica that 53 of the most powerful countries in the world have agreed to patrol and enforce harsh restrictions and penalties on anyone who attempts to independently explore it. Why has the entire continent of Antarctica, and everywhere else on Earth below the 60th south parallel, been caged off from us? The only way we can experience Antarctica is by being a government employee and working at one of their bases, or doing one of their overpriced penguin tours along the Antarctic coast. No one, even these very few humans, is granted the freedom to explore the continent, so even they are clueless as to what may exist at the furthest southern extents of the earth. The world's governments, militaries, media, schools, and literally everyone else except flat earthers claim with conviction and wholeheartedly believe that the South Pole is the southernmost extent of their globe. And by definition, this must be the case, because to continue traveling southwards beyond this southernmost point is tantamount to traveling northwards. If the Earth is not a globe, however, and is actually an extended level plane, as claimed by Flat Earthers, continuing to travel south of the South Pole would not and could not bring the traveler back north. On a Flat Earth, the traveler would instead continue southwards into unknown southern territories that don't exist on a globe. If NASA, the world's governments, militaries, media, academia, and or anyone else involved in maintaining the legitimacy of the globe concept truly wanted to shut up flat earthers once and for all, this is how easy it would be. Allow for independent travel south of the South Pole, or live stream a full south to north circumnavigation of the supposed globe starting in Antarctica and traveling south. Show the world's flat earthers that traveling south of the South Pole will somehow bring you north. At the very least, show us what happens when a plane travels perfectly straight in any direction starting from anywhere on Earth for 48 hours. If Earth is truly a ball 24,900 miles in circumference as we are taught, traveling perfectly straight in any direction starting from anywhere on Earth at an average flight speed of 550 miles per hour, the globe model claims the plane will circumnavigate the entire circumference and return to its original starting point. On a flat Earth, however, a plane traveling in a perfectly straight line, never deviating left or right, regardless of where it starts or which direction it travels, will eventually reach the Antarctic. Why has such a simple experiment never been performed in aviation history? Are we globe earthers and flat earthers alike, content and complacent enough with what we are told to simply trust it as truth? Children are taught in school that explorers like Magellan and others have traveled in perfectly straight lines eastwards or westwards and eventually arrived back at their starting point. It's universally heralded as proof of the globe, and most adults today still believe such circumnavigations have actually occurred. The truth of the matter is, however, that all successful circumnavigations in history, whether by sea or air, have followed the same pattern which is sailing or flying the most convenient route from port to port, stopping for supplies and refueling, until a complete circle has been made. Not a single sailor or aviator in history has or could travel only in the same one perfectly straight direction and magically arrive back where they began. This ridiculous lie becomes obvious when critically examined, but when taught to young children, successfully bends and warps their minds into accepting globe indoctrination. Unlike the cardinal directions on a compass rose, north, south, east, and west on earth 
are not simply straight lines separated by 90 degrees. North, rather than being an upward shooting arrow, is actually a point, a center point, the center point of the entire Earth known as the geographic North Pole, situated directly below Polaris, the North Pole star, the only motionless star in the heavens, which marks the exact center point of the sky. South, rather than being a downward shooting arrow, is actually every line tangent to the northern center point, or in other words, every straight line extending outwards from the North Pole heads due south. East and west, rather than being right and left facing arrows, are actually clockwise and counterclockwise circles around the pole. The sun, moon, and stars all rise in the east and set in the west, making perfect circles over and around us every day. As you can observe, they travel in a circular westward path over and around the earth, and do not all travel in a straight leftward direction as suggested by a compass rose. Likewise, navigators since ancient times have used Polaris to guide their ships, knowing that Polaris was the heavenly north pole, south was traveling keeping your back to Polaris, east meant traveling always keeping your left shoulder 90 degrees to Polaris, and west meant traveling always keeping your right shoulder 90 degrees to Polaris. So put up or shut up, globe apologists. If we are truly free, show us what happens when you go straight in a plane for 24 or 48 hours. If Earth is truly a globe, show us what happens when you travel south of the South Pole. We have never been shown or allowed to perform such a simple experiment. If NASA, the world's governments, militaries, media, academia, and or anyone else involved in upholding the globe truly wanted to prove their model and shut up every single flat earther once and for all, this is how easy it would be.